One more important part of the weather is water vapor present in the air. The amount of water vapor present in the air is referred as humidity. Let us see the impact of humidity. If you live or have visited some place near the sea or any place with high rainfall, you must have surely felt this. Imagine you are full of sweat and feel as if you are in a room filled with steam. You feel very uncomfortable. Why do you feel so? Let us understand this. Places near the sea and places with high rainfall have a lot of water vapor in the air. Such places are humid. The more water that is in the air, the higher we say that the humidity has risen. We sweat a lot when it is hot. The evaporating sweat cools you because the process of evaporation absorbs heat from your body. But when there is high humidity, less sweat from your skin evaporates into the air because the air has too much water already. So in humid places, you feel uncomfortable because your body cannot get rid of the heat from the sweat. So we see there are some conditions in which evaporation is faster like when the air is dry, when the temperature is high, when there is wind and the exposed surface is larger. Now we will understand the second process. If you cover the boiling water with the lid, you will observe tiny droplets of water on the inner surface of the lid. Why does this happen? The steam or water vapor due to the boiling water cools down and changes into tiny droplets of water. This process is called condensation. Condensation is just the opposite of evaporation. Like in the case of water vapor from the boiling water changing into droplets of water on cooling, the same thing happens to the water evaporated from the various bodies. This water vapor rises up into the sky. It meets the cool air. Then the water vapor becomes cold and changes into water droplets. The water droplets keep collecting to form clouds. But when there is too much collection of water droplets in the clouds, the clouds become heavy. This means the cloud can no longer hold this much amount of water. And the water starts to fall back in the form of rain. So we see both the evaporation and condensation result in the rainfall. That was the tireless journey which water continues to make endlessly. This is called water cycle. The water cycle is the journey water takes as it circulates from the land to the sky and back again to the land. Talking of rain, let me ask you a riddle. If six children and two dogs were under an umbrella, how come none of them got wet? Think, think. Was it because umbrella was a very big one? No. Think harder. Or was it because all kids were standing on top of each other? <laughs> no. It's because it wasn't raining. <laughs> kids, now your special friend Dragonfly will show you the very special journey of the water. The sun plays an important role in this journey. The sun's heat evaporates water from the earth's surface. The water vapor rises up and eventually condenses, forming tiny droplets of water in the clouds. When the clouds become heavy and are not able to hold more, they fall as rain and fill up the oceans rivers, lakes, ponds with water. The water again evaporates from these water bodies and the cycle of water continues. Not always the clouds shed their moisture as rain. 
it can take other forms too. Let us see them. Sometimes instead of rain or at times with the rain, we see small pieces of ice falling down. What causes this to happen? When the raindrops meet the very cold air, they freeze into small balls of ice called hail. You all must be knowing about snowfall. But how does it occur? In very cold places, the water vapor freezes into thin flakes of ice called snow. Sometimes at night and in early mornings, it becomes very hazy and we cannot see properly due to some cloud-like thing which is called fog. Fog happens when the water vapor in the air condenses into small droplets. Fog clears when the sun comes up. Have you observed tiny droplets of water on the flowers and leaves? What causes them? The water vapor present in the air condenses when it comes into the contact with cool plants. This is called dew. It is the dew which makes the grass wet in the early mornings. What happens to dew when it becomes very cold? Sometimes the dew freezes into tiny crystals when it is very cold. It is then called frost. Here we can see the frost on the leaves. Let us see one interesting phenomenon associated with the rain. If the sun comes out when it's raining, you may see the rainbow, the seven colored rainbow. What causes rainbow? Raindrops bend at different colors in the white light, separating them out into red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet, the seven colors of the rainbow. In simple words, rainbows are caused by the splitting of the white sunlight into its component colors by the raindrops. Now you know a lot about the changing weather. So from the next time, whenever you watch weather forecast on the television, you will understand how the weather will be tomorrow. Do you know what the scientist who studies the weather is called? He is known as the meteorologist.